Hey, how's it going? This is Ed with SGU TV, and today I'm going to talk to you guys about Medicare, Medicaid, other types of government provided health insurances, you know, government subsidies, things of that nature, as well as talk a little bit about just overall employer based insurance, private insurance, things of like that, and how it's split across the uh, United States population landscape. So let's get right to it. So, First of all, let's look at these numbers over here. What do these numbers represent? It talks about healthcare coverage source. What that means is that, okay, in the United States, these are just estimates, okay? About 47% of people are covered by employer-provided health insurance. Now, employer-provided health insurance may mean that the employer pays for portion of the, uh, any portion of the insurance. It might be a little bit, it might be a lot. But the thing is that, um, you know, employer provided health insurance. The reason why it's probably the most popular, besides the fact that people employed, is usually it's a little bit cheaper because the because the people are in a group rate, they can actually ask for discounts, right? And let's take a look at that from a business angle, right? Like, why would it be cheaper for people to get an employer? I mean, as a group to get a get a group rate to be cheaper. Well, if I have one person servicing thousands of individual accounts, right? Someone calls and they say, "Hey, this is wrong. That's wrong," right? then I have to hire a lot more people to do the uh, infrastructure and you know keep a lot more folders and files and things like that. But if I only have like a thousand people in one account, then I may be able to actually consolidate a lot of that paperwork and things like that. So I can realize some savings I can pass on to the customer. Also, there's a, you know, if there's a thousand customers that are buying in at a certain price, then they have a little bit more negotiating power to say, hey, you know, if you don't like it, I'm gonna take my business elsewhere. Do you really wanna say no to a thousand customers? Oh, you don't? Okay, so give me a price break. And it can work like that. Now, 33% of people are covered by government insurance. 13% are uninsured and 7% buy it on, you know, buy it for themselves. They're, they're uh, private, um, privately buying that insurance. So let's take a look at it, right? Um, so it makes sense, right? Uh, as, now I would expect these numbers to go up as in terms of employment insurance because the thing is that now it is actually mandated that you get insurance in the Affordable Care Act, but we're going to talk about that in a moment, but um, I do expect these numbers to go up. The government assisted insurance, right now that should also go up, right, because of the mandate. The uninsured, right? Mm, not sure exactly how the captains are get if they're counting people who are illegal immigrants, people that are undocumented, things of that nature. So, hey, it is what it is. Let's compare these numbers against the number, the percent of expenditure of the money that's spent on healthcare, right? If we consider everything is paid for through insurance rates, right? This is not really, uh, you know, taking into calculation some certain aspects of healthcare, but we're not, that's not what this video is about. So let's take with the government, okay? It's almost exactly reversed, right? Even though the, the government is um, only covering 33% of the people, it's paying out 47%, it's paying out the most, right? This is number one, right? 30% of the people, right? Uh, the, as 47% of the people that are covered uh, under employer health insurance are only receiving about 30% of the overall costs that are associated with healthcare. The same numbers are reversed as in terms of uninsured versus private, okay? And there's just, it really makes sense when you think about it, right? People that are on government assistance, they may be having more issues, they may be having disabilities, they can't work, so they will be taking up a larger portion of the budget. There's other things that could happen as well. As in terms of the private, right, remember we said that just from a business perspective, they have the least amount of, um, ability to really make things happen for themselves. So as in terms of uh, they're paying up the most and they're getting the least back, you know, so that makes sense, right? As in terms of the uninsured, right, we see the uninsured people kind of, um, well, it's not really, it's really kind of compared apples and oranges to a certain extent, right? But you can see that it's, it's a little bit more even, right? Which would make sense. But people who are uninsured often are people that are young, people that are just haven't gotten around to getting insurance. They just you know, got out from college and now they're their first job and they may be uninsured. There's other people that have uh, lost their, uh, um, their jobs 
and there's something called COBRA where they can continue to have health insurance, but then they have to pay the whole entire thing. Health insurance can be ridiculously expensive, $400, $500 a month. It's absolutely ridiculous, okay? To tell you the truth, I spent a long t portion of my life being uninsured, you know? Um, I just couldn't afford it, you know? It just didn't make sense to me. My insurance was working out and staying healthy, and, you know, just health insurance wasn't an option for me. I got some stories about that. I'm going to share that in other videos. All right, let's get to it. So let's talk about some more things over here. Now, let's get to talking about the Affordable Care Act, which is something that is also known as Obamacare. Am I supportive of Obamacare? Well, parts of it, and parts of it, maybe not so much. Just like pretty much with everything, right? But let's take a look at one of the uh, main ideas behind Obamacare and over here, I have some little um, memory devices to try to help me memorize for the exam that's coming up, okay? So one of the things for the Affordable Care Act is that, okay, it's supposed to help lower costs, okay, for people that, you know, well, not just for people, but like over, across the whole system, right? It's supposed to have some type of systemic uh, cost-saving effects. This umbrella right here means that it's supposed to cover more people. And you can see over here, I have this line right here, that federal, federal math, that federal math, right, saying for DFM, and the D stands for what? D stands for one. F stands for what? F would be the number eight, and M would be the number three, 183, right? So we're using this, um, that federal math to help us remember using the major mnemonic system, you could look it up, uh, if another video we have, 180, if you're 183% of the poverty level, then you will qualify for the Affordable Care Act, okay? It's going to provide expanded coverage for people who are within that category, okay? Well, making 183% of the income. Here's some other things that it's uh, designed to achieve, okay? It's supposed to put a cap on co-payments and a cap on out-of-pocket payments. So some people just had to spend so much on health care, you know, and honestly the costs are really out of control. That's for another video. But the thing is that uh, it's supposed to say, look, you know, you can't ask people to spend just this money, the, over this amount of money, just unreasonable. There is no coverage uh, withdrawal, right? So you can't say, oh, you just got AIDS? It looks like your healthcare is going to go up. I'm your insurance company, and now that you have AIDS, you know, we were happy to take all your money when we were healthy, but now that you're sick, we're just going to take it away. <laughs> That kind of like is the, against the whole entire idea of insurance in the first place, right? But unfortunately that was happening. So now they made a law, they said, look, you can't do that anymore. And lifetime limits is also something that they got rid of, right? They said, oh, well, you know, a lot of people, they get you know, into health issues when they're 50s, 60s, they get into these uh, long-lasting issues that can cost a lot of money. Chronic diseases like cardiovascular disease, diabetes. So we're going to cover you in your 20s and 30s when you're less likely to have these health issues and that wouldn't cut you off. And uh, Affordable Care Act says, that's not really cool, you can't do that anymore. You know, you can't just ask people for money in one section and, and cut them off. Once again, it's against the whole basic principle of insurance, okay? Now over here they say, uh, but, right, it's not all on the health insurance side either, right? The health insurance gets some benefits as well, right? The thing is that now everybody has to have insurance coverage. You're mandated to have it. So, okay. We see that these guys were not really the most nice guys, right? We see that they had to make some laws to try to regulate the, the insurance company. And now we all have to be with an insurance company. Let's see how that works out. It might work out, but it's going to have I think it requires a revolution in ideals and, uh, you know, attention to thing that is not really going on, but whatever, that's just me. Okay, so according to the current numbers, one third of the population is now eligible for government-assisted health care. There is actually with the Affordable Care Act, which makes a lot of sense, there is no co-pay required now for preventative uh, care or for screening. So a lot of people will be going in to get screenings and present preventative care, which is ideal, right? We want people to be holistically healthier. We don't want people to just go in after there's an emergency, right? You have a small cut on your hand, get that cleaned up, put a band-aid on it, right? Instead of waiting until it gets infected and then you have to chop off the whole entire hand. That doesn't sound like a good outcome. 
There's also a 10% bonus for primary care. There's a lot of debate in the industry. They say, oh, primary care physicians are underpaid and all this kind of other business. You know, honestly, I don't really care about income. That's just me. I know a lot of, I'm a big exception in this type of rule. I right now realize that um, doctor, the, the healthcare system in America is actually, you know, overpriced and underperforming. So, you know, you're asking for more money, it's not, it's not a good look, right? It doesn't make sense, but, you know, some people, they just have different priorities, so, whatever. All right, let's talk about this right here, okay? Medicare, okay? And uh, we're gonna get to Medicaid in another video, because it's only thing. but Medicare covers about 47 million Americans. If we think about that, you, uh, New York City is about 8 million Americans, right? So that's about six times the population of New York City. Okay, that's the that's amount of people that are on Medicare, okay? Medicare is meant to serve the elderly and disabled, the opposite of Medicaid, right? Medicaid is there to serve people who are um, absolutely poor. They can't afford it, right? Medicaid, they're getting aid, right? But here it's care, right? You care for the elderly, right? It makes sense, right? You care for people that have disabilities, right? You give aid to people that, you know, they're, they're fully functional, but they just need some aid, okay? It's the difference there, aid. You know, it's not really 100% making sense, but just got to memorize the difference between Medicare and Medicaid. Now, Medicare, what it does, it'll cover about half the cost if you are having some type of a disease. So it's not going to cover the whole entire thing, okay? Medicaid will care the, cover the whole thing, but Medicare will not, okay? There's also this idea of Medigap insurance. There's a lot of things in Medicare that, let's suppose you're elderly, right? And you need, you'll see those elderly people with walkers, right? Medicare might not cover your equipment. It might not cover certain aspects of your care. It might not cover certain screens. It might not cover certain, um, well now with the Unemployed um, Care Act, it does. We're gonna talk about that in a moment, but um, it might not cover certain um, tests, things of that nature. So that's just a definite concern for people on Medicare. In Medigap. Okay. Let's move on. Okay, let's talk about there's four different subsets of the Medicare program, A, B, C, and D, and let's talk about it. Okay. So the thing about type A is type A is going to be covering you for any hospital stays, any stays inside of a nursing home, right? Anytime you have to go in for care, Medicare is going to provide coverage for that. However, it's only for skilled care. Okay, so let's suppose that you are quadriplegic. You cannot actually, you know, you need to have a home assistant. You may also need to have someone to help you clean your house. Having the person to clean your house is not going to be covered by Medicare, okay? You know, you could make an argument that, you know, you need to have the house clean for sanitary reasons, for your overall health, it's not going to work, okay? You, just the fact is that it has to be skilled work, from the nurses, doctors, people with uh, degrees and certificates and that type of thing, right? Okay. So the thing is that over here, right, <clears throat> you can see I say the employer is Daryl. You can think about Daryl from, uh, I know he's a very well-known character from, what's that zombie show? Some kind of zombie show. I don't watch a lot of TV. Um, but I know Daryl's some kind of guy who rides a motorcycle on some TV show, zombies and stuff. Or there was like a machine named Daryl back in the day, yeah, that was some movie. And self is new, right? So if we use a um, memory mnemonic system, one, four, and five, right? 1.45% uh, of Medicare is paid for by the employer, and 1.45% is paid for by, uh, I mean, this is 2.9, right? 2.9, and 2.9% is paid for if you are self-employed. It's kind of like a tax for people that are their own bosses, I've been my own boss for most of my life, so I guess I was paying extra taxes. Whatever. Okay, so now, um, you know, and you can take a look at that as really the system rewards you for being part of this system. You know what I mean? The system does not want you to be going out and doing your own thing. <laughs> you know, you have to pay a penalty for working for yourself. That's basically how I look at it. You know, they say they're all pro small businesses. Not really. Hey, it's my own little right. Okay, so let's get to this over here. So, you are covered for Medicare if you are, remember I said elderly, 65 or over. You have to have paid in for 10 years, so it does not cover uh, necessarily people who are undocumented. 
Okay, that would be Medicaid, once again. Okay, it will also cover your spouse until you're 65. So suppose I turn 66, right? I had my wife that I was living with, and then I felt horribly ill, right? And then my wife has to go on welfare, um, you know, to be able to afford treatment off Medicaid. No, she may be covered through my Medicare, right? It's kind of like a, it's like an insurance as in terms of can cover your spouse. Now, that's type A, okay? So type A is like the normal one that's for people that are, you know, in a, I guess, um, I would say a certain bracket, right? But the thing is that Medicare for B, right? Medicare B, they have to make this, uh, they have to have an additional co-payment for the premium. So I'm gonna think that people who are making over a certain amount of money will probably have to be enrolled in Medicare B, right? Now Medicare B, what is that co-pay? Well, we can remember that, uh, I'm gonna say that the premium, right? Diesel, right? So the premium, right, that they have to pay every month or a year, right, depending on how the system is built, is gonna be, uh, well, actually it was important in this case, right? But diesel, right, this, remember this is one, S is gonna be zero, and it's gonna be five, so they have to pay $105 a month, or is that a year? Give me a second. Okay. You see I have the word premium and diesel. So the premium is going to be one, zero, five, right? Using memory mnemonic system. Now if we talk about $105, right? Remember I said that it could be $400, $500, $600 a month for health insurance, maybe even more. But the thing is that, uh, so, you know, is it going to be $100 a year? That would be nice. Unfortunately, it's going to be about a what's the thing, one, zero, five, hundred five dollars a month, okay? There's going to be some variance in that, but you know, that's, that's a general figure. Let's go down to C. Now, in terms of C, this is, uh, once again, moving back towards the idea of uh, supporting the system, okay? So now, instead of getting on to uh, the government directly paying for these types of uh, healthcare plans, what happens is that we have to enroll in a private healthcare plan once again, we're going back to the insurance companies, the guys who are, you know, we're running loose and rampant saying, you know, we're not going to, we're going to play all these games and, you know, oh, you get sick, we're going to cut off your insurance. You uh, become too old and more likely to have this disease, we're going to cut off your insurance. And uh, we're thrown back to them, right? Now, it's called Medicare Advantage. So the thing is that we have to enroll in these health care plans, these insurances, and Medicare, instead of paying for our direct health care costs, is going to pay for the premium. Now, it doesn't make a lot of sense to me because the thing is that, you know, if the people are paying into the government, then the government should be able to use that money. If, if the insurance company is for profit, then the government can make that profit and they could just uh, pay out and everything should be fine, but they don't want to do that. And it doesn't make any sense to me, but hey, this is Medicare. Welcome to the wonderful world of American well, U.S. okay, healthcare. This doesn't make sense. All right, let's go to D. Right, as terms of now, this is the drugs over here, and once again, we can see the whole systemic factors in play. So there's something called the donor hole, right? That's what it's best known for. I mean, you know, we'll pay for your drugs, but after you hit a certain amount, right, then it's going to shut off, right? So let's take a look at that. Okay. So now, I have two. Um, two memory devices over here, I have the word infamous and the word real loss, okay? N, right? N, that's gonna be two, right? F is gonna be eight, M is gonna be three, two, eight, three, and S is gonna be zero, so 2830, right? Two hundred two thousand eight hundred thirty dollars You, once you spend $2,830, right? Then your coverage for drugs is not covered it's a little bit covered, we're going to talk about that in a moment, but your, your overall drug coverage is not, is not paid for. Okay? After that point, uh, uh, to 2830, right, you can spend $2,830 in a year, and then you're good to go, but if you spend over that, then you start to have a problem. So now what happens is that within this case right here, right, and by the way, sometimes the drugs are just ridiculously marked up. 
okay, now we hit this point, right? Once you hit the, so within this, between 20, 30, and 45, 50, you're not covered, okay? However, you can still get brand name drugs, okay? There's gonna be generic and there's gonna be brand name. Often the brand name is much more expensive. You can still get the brand names at half off, okay? Is there any good reason for this? Absolutely not. It's just um, basically the drug companies cashing in. It's just obvious, you know, it's really sad, whatever. But you must incur a real loss before they start to cover your drugs again. So real loss, right, we use that to be R, which is gonna be what, the number four? L is gonna be five, right? L is going to be 5 again, and S is going to be 0. So real loss, right? 45, 50. Okay? And that's the donut hole for you. I hope this is informative. Thank you very much for checking us out. Have a beautiful day. All right, that's it. Thanks for checking out SGU TV. Please make sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and check out our other videos.